Hello YouTube, today we're looking at this circuit here and looking at the switch specifically, figuring out the voltage and the current for right before the switch flips to right after the switch flips and how the circuit behaves if you let it go on forever. So, go ahead, pause, take, uh, pause the video if you want to take a closer look at this problem, but we're going to jump into it otherwise. So, here's the circuit, I just kind of redrew it and we're going to find uh, the voltage at T equals zero minus, and that just pretty much means like right before the switch uh, is flipped. So right before, uh, what happens? So the switch hasn't flipped yet. Uh, we can describe the relationship here uh, by, because the switch hasn't been flipped yet, it's technically like an open circuit uh, for that section there, for what, what is the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, that's what we're solving for V. So it's just kind of open, right? Because the switch hasn't flipped yet. Uh, so what happens is all you do is say, well, there's a 10 voltage battery source. So the voltage across the capacitor would also have to share that same voltage initially before the switch is flipped. So you just get 10 volts. Um, so that's how you get the first part. Now what about the current? Well, since we're kind of treating this like an open circuit, the current wouldn't be there. Uh, there is no current because it's not like fully closed and uh, the circuit is open. Next, we're going to do it right after the switch flips, so it made its way over to the right there. What happens... oops, I gave it away. <laughs> what happens to the voltage? Well, for a capacitor specifically, since we're looking for the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage does not change instantly. So it still remains 10 volts uh, despite the fact that it's been switched, because there is a voltage drop from that 10 volt source there. But even though the switch is flipped, it doesn't take it doesn't uh, impact the voltage with the other source on the right side of the circuit. Okay, cool. Now let's uh, take a look at part D, which is the current uh, right after the switch has been thrown. So that's the current uh, going through the capacitor there. So I'm going to redraw the circuit here. Um, big thing to note: this is a very important thing. Notice how I drew that battery in red. Well, that's not the battery on the far left. That is actually the capacitor. The capacitor behaves like a battery right when the switch is thrown. Because remember, we just determined that there's 10 volts across that capacitor, right? So immediately when the switch is thrown, the charge stays on that battery or on that capacitor. So it acts like a battery producing 10 volts only momentarily for that instant. So what you can do is just replace that battery with or the capacitor with the battery just for. Uh, an analogy sort of purpose for solving the circuit. So we're looking for the current going through it. So what uh, there's two ways you can do this <coughs> to solve it, or there's two ways that I noticed you can do. Um, so you can do the loops here and find the current going uh, through V1 using uh, KCL or KVL. Um, but we're going to do uh, by looking at the loops here to solve for the current. So you take the voltage from the battery, which is really the capacitor, subtract the current I1 minus, since I is, um, excuse me, minus the current uh, resistance times the sum of the current leaving, since they're coming together, if you notice that part in the center right below V1, both I1 and I2 sum together through that resistor of 1 kilo ohms, and that is leaving V1, so it's subtracting. Uh, that there to equal zero because the current at any point or at any node is zero. Um, so we have the battery source minus I1 uh, minus that section there. So you just solve and you get I is 4.5 but if you notice how we defined I in red is downward and I1 is clockwise. So since they're in opposite directions or I is in the opposite direction of I1 that means it would have to be negative. So the current's actually flowing clockwise, not counterclockwise. So as shown in, as we drew in I1. So another way to do it is KCL. Um, you can go ahead and walk through that if you'd like. Uh, you had to find the voltage for, first and then use uh, that to find the current. And you actually don't have to worry about the sign there. So on the right here is kind of like by inspection, doing some basic math over there on the left is just kind of like going through with the normal KCL uh, method. And then next we'll have E, which is what happens with this circuit as, you know, time goes to infinity, as you just let it run forever. So right when the switch is thrown, what happens to the voltage? Well, the capacitor actually breaks the circuit, right? It gets so filled up with charge, it just breaks. And that means it leaves an open circuit. Uh, so you have 
that right portion of the circuit there, but is there still a voltage? Well, yes. Um, by V equals IR, you can actually solve for that. Um, you know, there's one kilo ohm um, resistance times one milliamp. So the voltage at that across that area, uh, since in, is in parallel, is one volt. Uh, so because you have the one milliamp source, so the current's just one milliamp. Uh, so you have that, and you know it's going to be across that one kilo ohm resistor in parallel. Uh, so you have that one voltage across uh, that part. So even though the current, even though the current is an open current, there can still be a voltage, um, uh, just like as t goes to infinity. So we got one volt there. Next, what happened? I already gave it away. What happened to the current? Uh, so since it's an open circuit, you know there's no more current through it, even though there is a voltage, but. That's just kind of what happens there. Uh, so that's uh, how you find the voltage and the current as time goes to infinity. And then next we're going to be finding tau, which is the time constant for t is greater than zero. Now what you do to do that is you take the circuit, you deactivate the source on the right there, and uh, you can find the equivalent resistance. Now, so, now since that section there is deactivated, that uh, one kilo ohm resistor on the upper right is actually pointless. Uh, it just travels the path of least resistance, so current would only flow on that left side or that left loop there on the left uh, over there. So you just, since you sum the remaining resistors, which is one and one, to give you a total equivalent resistance of two kilo ohms, the tau as a time constant is one over A, and A is defined as one over RC, R being resistance, C being capacitance. So tau is R times C if you plug A over there. So we have our equivalent, we have capacitance, so two times two is four. Watch your units, kilo ohms times microfarads gives you milliseconds. And that's how you find the time constant. So I hope this was a good problem for you. It's kind of difficult. I'd have to say so myself, but just kind of outlining um, how to approach the problem and uh, how to solve it. So I hope this helped and happy studying.